important because um, it's an earned privilege. I'm in a safer place now. I'm in a safer location where I have electricity, running water, and a stable internet. A lot of my comrades and community that I serve do not have any of these basic necessities. So my work is really to amplify their ask, their demands, the message that they want to send out to the wider global communities that these atrocities are happening on the ground and we shouldn't fold our arm and just forget about what is happening in Burma. Burma, the country I was born in, represents the country with the longest running civil war in the world. It's been over 70 years, ongoing conflict. But in the early part of my career, I work on labor migrations in the Southeast Asia regions. And I witnessed the labor rights abuse and human rights violations of our people in the neighboring countries. We have this very militarized um, economic system and not promoting the equal distribution of wealth and not promoting the equal distributions of employment opportunities to the broad-based populations. It's when I realized that it is a time for me to really double down on the peace-building effort and I decided to return and start working in my home country. Women are at the forefront of this struggle for democracies and federal democratic nation-building process we cannot be ignored anymore, but our sustained and concerted effort and trying to do inside outside lobbying and advocacy effort has given us the opportunity now that many of the security organizations have allowed us to jointly produce gender inclusion plans in their organizations. You know, it is very difficult to be hopeful in our circumstances, but change will happen. Even if it doesn't happen in my lifetime, I think my children will continue on.